Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel, aka Hashlips, and welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to discuss the updates that I've been working on on the new art engine. There has been many updates to get to this point, and if you want to check them all out, go and check out all the previous update videos. This will get you up to speed about what all the features are all about. So go ahead and do that. While I was procrastinating to do the actual render logic, I decided to implement a light theme as well. So now you can use the engine in a light mode if that is what you fancy. All right, so uh, I'm gonna switch back to dark mode and let's get into the interesting stuff. So for now, I have a setup, a studio setup where I have two groups. And um, I just want to show this to show all the configuration on the collection. I'm going to head over to my render section right now, and I can see my two groups over here. And so I know that from the first group, we're going to render 20 and the second one 20 as well. If I select the actual collection, you can see now I've got an abundance of uh, configuration. So here you can set all your stuff for your collection. Uh, ranging from your description, your external URL, how you want to name the items, what your uh, prefix is going to be after you upload it to IPFS or uh, Arweave. So you can set all the metadata stuff in here, but you can also set what needs to render. But let's give it a go. And you can notice that I can actually use the engine freely and uh, build out my collection. And when I want to generate, it actually says get an access pass. And this is where I am. Uh, gating the application. So you can go ahead and build out entirely what you want your collection to look like. And then at the point where you want to render, you get to pay a small fee. And I'm doing this because I've been working on this thing for quite some time. And it would be nice to actually get some return uh, for all the effort that I've put in. So how it would work, this is driven on um, a smart contract on Polygon. So you would just go and get an access pass. And it's really not expensive. Uh, it's going to be like three Matic. I'm still figuring out the price, but it will give you an hour uh, access to generate so that you can make changes, regenerate and try different configurations as well uh, for three Matic. And I don't think that's bad because it's uh, literally under three dollars. So anyway, I'm going to confirm this and then I just need to accept on my uh, MetaMask. So once that's happening, it's going to switch to generate and you can see that now we're ready to rock and we can also see I've got a nice little uh, timer uh, over there as well to let me know how long I have access to generate. So let's go ahead and now click on generate. It's going to tell me that it's uh, preferred or suggested that you save the file. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to click on save file and this will just save the config for if I want to come back and regenerate this at a later stage. Let me click on generate, confirm, and then just sign a message. And now it goes and generates. So here uh, is our complete generation. I can see 40 items from the two groups. Now that we have the generation, there's something cool that's new. And that's this analysis tab. So now I can actually see the summary of what actually happened. For example, I can see the total generation. I can also see how many duplicate items I have in this generation, which I might want to change. All the traits, all the options that was available, all the used options, and even the unused options so that I can visually see um, because maybe you have a big collection, you can't go through all of your items. You can see, okay, this is concerning. I really want all my options to be used, so I need to set the parameters differently. You can also see which ones uh, were used, for example, in the background, all of them were used. And if you go down, we can actually scroll and see the Santa option for the clothing was unused. And that's probably because our collection size is quite small. But now let's go ahead and configure the uh, generation so we do not have any duplicates. And also uh, maybe so that we don't have any unused options as well. So to do that, we can just go to our collection, go here, maybe switch on no duplicates and let's mix up all the items. So when I do that and I go and generate, let's wait for it, there we go. You can see the items are also mixed. And now if we go to the analysis, we can see we have no duplicates. However, we still have two unused options. So what do we do? We either can increase the generation 
but we can just go ahead and look at which items were not used or which options were not used. We can see that the monster and the rotten uh, x-rays weren't used. So then I would go in here and I would check why. So I can see that the rotten, there is zero probability set on that. So I'm gonna just give it a 10 uh, probability and this monster I'm gonna increase as well maybe. And so this should be better and maybe let's also uh, increase the Santa outfit. Just so that we give it a fair probability um, and make sure that it can render in our limited size. The bigger you make the groups, the more likely it is that it will be there. So once we've made these changes, I'm just gonna generate again. And there we go. So now we can see we've got 40 generations, no duplicates, and these were the traits that's been used. And this is phenomenal. Now we have insight in how our generation looks like. And now it means like, hey, I could be happy with this and I can actually render it. So let me go and provide access to a folder. And once I've done so, I can just click on render. And this will now start rendering. As we can see, it's quite fast. And the reason for that is because we only have the images set up. So this will only give us images and we can see our entire collection over here. Just need to move it so you can see as well. And as you can see, that is great. But we also might want metadata. So instead I'm gonna say, okay, include the Ethereum metadata or for that matter, Solana metadata as well. And then let's go ahead and render again. And now it's a bit slower. So you can switch it in and out. You can maybe just render images and just metadata, um, whatever you would like to do. I'm also gonna show you that if you're not you know, happy with your config and you're like, oh, I need to change something, you can hard stop and it will stop. Uh, you would need to regenerate then. I haven't put in a continue, uh, but just to show you, I've stopped it there. We also have a metadata file and we can now uh, see our beautiful metadata in here as well. So as for Solana metadata, I still need to figure that out because there's no set way for Solana. Uh, all the platforms use it differently, so I need to find one that will work for all. I'm busy with that next, but I'm fairly happy with how this is turning out so far. And I think artists are really gonna have a blast using this. Once you get used to the interface, I think it just feels natural to kind of do this in a chronological step-by-step -step way and have fun and play around with the options that you, uh, that you need and how you can configure your collection uh, in your way. Uh, so anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, let me know in the comments. I really appreciate that. Give this video a thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm can share this with the world. And uh, till the next time, I hope you have a lovely day. Cheers for now.